You are watching Drive the Lightning, the positively charged EV channel. Carl, you did that better than anybody else. We got a lot to talk to you about. Uh, you, you got a trip for California coming up to the Aptera factory. We want to talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. You won an award. That's what's dragging you to California. We want to talk about that. You've been heavily involved in helping others make the switch to EVs. We want to talk about how you're doing that. And of course, of course. your views on Aptera and help our audience understand how smoothly they can transition with a home charger. Okay, does that sound fair? Sounds good. Yeah, Sounds let's get good. into it. Well, let, let's start with some background before we get okay. to the, what made you make the switch and when to EVs? Yeah, great question. Um, I had the opportunity with uh, uh, one of the companies I worked for to do an expat assignment in Germany. And so they don't transport your cars. So you you go over there and you drive, you know, a company car. And, uh, and then when you come back, you got to start completely over again. And when I lived in Germany, the gasoline and diesel was the equivalent of seven and eight dollars a gallon. And this is back in 2011. And I thought to myself when I came back, man, I need to get something more efficient because it's only a matter of time before that sort of price range is going to come to the U.S. And it really hasn't. But it, that's that's what started me thinking. And then we had actually diesels, you know, what can I say? Right. They're efficient. Um, and we took a trip to London one weekend and everything was diesel, the taxis, the buses, the private cars. And then, um, you know, at the end of the day, you go back to your hotel room and not to be too gross, but you blow your nose and it's black. It's like, this can't be right. Particulates, you know, this, this isn't good. So right about that time, Nissan put out this app and I've never seen it since. It was like a EV driving simulator and you would you would start this thing up while you were driving your own car and it would tell you like you're you would say i'm starting with 100 percent charge and then i'm going to go this far and then how much range do i have left and i did that with my commute in germany and i'm like oh i can do this and this is back in the day when a leaf had like 70 miles of range right and that's exactly what i ended up doing i ended up coming back to the us i bought an off lease 2012 nissan leaf and it was my daily driver my company had workplace charging, so I basically drove for free. And then I learned how it all works. And before you knew it, I added a Tesla to my garage. And 2018, I sold my last gas car. Oh, that's excellent. And now you have a, a Kia Nero in the family, a, a Tesla, and a motorcycle. That's right. Which is yeah. what? So is that the, what's yeah, the motorcycle? Uh, zero. It's a, a zero. Zero, zero SRS. Um so I, you know, I've upgraded over the years. Um, I had a 2015 Model S, uh, sold that last year when Tesla was dropping the prices on the Model Ys because I wanted the functionality of a Y, the faster charging. I wanted to be able to tow. So sold it to the S to a friend of ours. So I have a Model Y. And then we upgraded our Leaf to the Kia Nero because we also wanted more range. And it was just the right time. They brought them into Michigan and then I got into uh, electric motorcycles. I don't know if you know Tony Helmholt. He's uh, a Tesla technician. He now works for Lucid. He's in the Grand Rapids area. And he showed up at National Drive Electric Week with a zero motorcycle. And I'm like, right? They have electric motorcycles? Wait a minute. <laughs> and before you know it, I was out shopping and I bought a used one, uh, you know, and then again, you get used to it. You, you decide what features do you like and not like and then i ended up upgrading to a brand newer one with more range and you know now i've got it tricked out as a touring motorcycle oh, and i'm cool. psyched i'm going to uh, you know tail the dragon again this coming year so mm. lots of fun nice. nice i love that you have a zero because your youtube channel is a zero e michigan channel right. so it's appropriate Perfect. that you should drive a zero because it Absolutely. just goes with the theme i love it and those are our favorite videos when you get on your motorcycle you did a couple of them over the summer and fall where you're driving to where there's supposed to be new chargers to see if they're actually check there mm -hmm. and see yep. if they're up and running see if they're being blocked by people uh, i love those because we do that yeah we go to yep. the charge point app or the electrifying miracle oh there's a new charger let's go check it out you know just so how did you get to just a guy who switched over to EVs to a guy who's about to win an award for promoting EV adoption? How, what, what is it that makes you 
What's the word? Tell us about your journey. Tell us about your journey. That's how a millennial, a millennial yeah. would say it. <laughs> Tell us about your journey. Or an NPR host. What was that yeah. journey like? No, seriously, What? what well, how do you go from yeah. just a driver to an advocate? Well, you know how it is when you have a, a certain kind of vehicle and then suddenly you're looking for a community, right? And that's when, uh, at the time I lived in Kansas City and I didn't know anybody else that drove an EV. So what did I do? I started a Facebook group. Oh. And... Um, uh, and that still exists. And there are a couple hundred members. And I start to get to know people that in my area that drove EVs. And we we did like little social get togethers. Uh, we were talking tech, of course. And um, and then I was helping people because, you know, you after a while you learn how does charging work? Where are the chargers? And then you help other people that are just getting into it. And okay. And that really spoke to me. Like when I can help people, you know, change how they do things to, to navigate this paradigm shift a little bit. Um, that really energizes me. That gets me positively charged. So yeah, I like that. Uh, but, um, but you got to stay grounded too. Carl. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And then um, when I moved to Michigan, we decided to move back here because we, we were here once uh, during my career, fell in love with the area, and then decided we were going to retire here. So that's what I did. Came back here and then... Uh, started a Facebook page, West Michigan EV enthusiasts, which now I just dropped the West name because we're getting people from all over. We got a oh, thousand cool. members almost. And yes. um, and then before you know it, I got approached by Bethany Tabor, who was the Power My Drive lead at Consumers Energy. And she said, hey, I see what you're doing. I see that you're retired and we need somebody who does education and outreach at Consumers Energy because we're getting into EVs big. How'd you like to come out of retirement? And it was right around the time of COVID. So we couldn't get out a lot. And I'm like, okay, I can work out of my house. All the things fit. Talk to my wife. Like, are you okay with me doing this? And that's what I ended up doing. And I, you know, 2021, I started working there and uh, we were managing the, the Power My Drive program, which is the residential and commercial uh, rebate program. And then the group kept growing to the point where um, there was actually a position to just do education and outreach. Wow. And and that's kind of what, again, energizes me. And it's it's doing things like putting up a tent at the um, Grand Rapids Auto Show, which I'm sure we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to have our F-150 Lightning and show vehicle to nice. load. And again, just get people out there looking at the EVs. And you know how National Drive Electric thing, uh, how those meetings work. It's, it's just you get... Um, people who are not trying to sell you a car, they're, right. they're advocates, they're uh, people who actually drive the vehicles. And so it's a safe environment for people to actually talk to somebody who's not trying to sell you something. Um, and now, in you know, from the consumer's perspective, we're not trying to sell them a car, we're trying to help them figure out how to do home charging. Let's dive into that just a moment, Carl, that last part you said about trying to get people into home charging. I was just with a client recently. I'm, in, I'm a commercial realtor, and he said that his son won a uh, v, uh, Volkswagen ID4. ID4. He won it like in a raffle or something. And he said, but my son said he, he would just take the cash value because he don't want to go through all the hassle of setting up a home charger. And I went, what are you talking about? It's so easy and people don't know, but programs like yours at Consumers mm -hmm. is how we got our home charger and we've talked about it. Uh, and can you just explain the program without going into all the details, but how, how hard is it really from someone who's done it to set up a home charging system? Yeah, it, it's not hard at all. Now, you know, there's always asterisks. There are going to be some uh, installation cases where it's a little bit difficult or expensive, but let's say you have a typical home. Uh, you have access to a garage. I mean, that's number one, right? So it's a little bit different for people that live in multifamily dwellings, you know, condos, apartments. But if you have a house where you have a garage and you can regularly park your vehicle there and you have access to the breaker box and you have a decent amount of space left in it, both physical and electrical, I mean, it's basically like adding a 50 amp circuit. So it's no different than adding like a range uh, maybe a little bit more than an electric dryer, but it's nothing exotic. You're talking about breaker, wire, outlet, and then you plug in the EVSE or the charger, as a lot of people call it. You plug that into that high power outlet and the other end plugs into your car. And that's pretty much it. 
And where Consumers Energy gets involved is uh, two things. Number one, there's a rebate. And it used to be we rebated specific brands of chargers because we had network agreements with those companies so we could get aggregate data, not like Big Brother, like, what are you doing? It's more like, <laughs> what are people what are people doing in terms of charging off P? Because that's what the MPSC wants to know. Right. Um, you know, that's that's who regulates the electrical industry. And then the other thing that we do is we partner with electricians that we've vetted so that if you don't know where to start, if you don't want to do it yourself, or you don't already have an electrician that you work with, we can get somebody in there that we know is going to give you preferential pricing and they know what they're doing, just getting people started. And once they understand it, it's like, oh, I can do that. And on, you know, this time of year, I'm thinking, hey, I'm not out there standing in the slush trying to gas up my car. I pull into my garage. It's, you know, relatively dry and warm and I plug in and I walk away. You know, how long does it take you to charge? 10 seconds, five Ten seconds, seconds to plug in, five seconds to unplug. That's it. And in the morning, it's 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 done. And I've noticed uh, Sarah and I looked around and other states have similar programs to their energy companies. So we encourage the audience, check with your energy company. There may Absolutely. be some help available. Uh, yep. We found two a tax credit through the federal government for the installation, I think it was. So yep. $500 we got from you guys. And you can energy. stack it. And we stack stacked it. it. And I think our whole project installation and the unit, uh, I think we paid a hundred bucks totally out of pocket. Out of awesome. out of our pocket. Yeah. And Everything. I would need to push back on uh, the word garage. We don't have a garage, Carl. True. Okay. Our could be a driveway. Ours yeah. is yeah, it's exactly. mounted right to the side of our house. It's been that way. This will be the fourth winter. We've had zero issues. Let's talk <laughs> about this award you won. You won an award for helping people. Uh, make the switch to EVs here in the Southwest Michigan area. This award you won is going to take you to one of our favorite places. This is like Disney World for me and Sarah. <laughs> it's the EV and that's Disney World. The Aptera <laughs> factory in Carlsbad. Yeah. Uh, what is your plan when you walk in there? Oh, I want to see everything. So I'd love to meet uh, Chris and Steve, the CEOs. I'd love to sit in one of the prototypes. I'd love to get a ride in one. Uh, obviously, take a little bit of video. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a total Aptera geek. Um, I'm, you know, I, I'm 3D printing models, nice. you know, nice. and um, so, you know, I, and I love this efficiency. Looking forward to that. And I think the EV Association has some other things planned. They kind of also tease that they might have access to a VW ID buzz. So that would be another fun one to see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, but obviously, I'd, I'd love to see also what's going on in terms of Aptera uh, production. You know, they're mm -hmm. kind of in this stage right now of, you know, between prototype and, and production. We've ridden in, in the uh, Alpha Aptera. Mm -hmm. And of course, we got to sit in the Gamma, the latest prototype that's physically. Uh, and you're going to you're going to find it very enjoyable. And I really hope you go for a ride and we'll be watching your channel because I think you'll get a lot of good interviews yeah. and a lot of good footage for your channel which uh, is awesome, by the way. If you haven't subscribed to Carl's channel yet, what are you waiting for? You just hit the button and it's done. Yep. Yeah, Zero and it's great. E Michigan, yeah, well, which is a great pun besides everything else. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Zero emissions, yeah. zero E Michigan, yeah. So how did you yeah. first hear about Aptera? And, and, and besides efficiency, is that is are you just an efficiency guy or is there more to it than that that attracts you to it? Well, th that's a big part of it. Um, I just, uh, I, I hate to see waste. Um, you know, we, we only have so much, so much energy on the planet. Um, and so, you know, and, and by training, I'm a chemical engineer. And so a lot of uh, what oil is used for is actually petrochemicals. And, you know, every single piece of plastic that's out there is basically made from oil. And so my take on it is let's not burn it. Let's use it to build up this next generation of, of energy production of, to build the world rather than turning it all into water and CO2 by burning it. That's a big part of it. And I just, I love design. Again, being an engineer, when I, when I hear Chris and Steve talk about, you know, computational fluid dynamics and how the, the vehicle is just kind of slices through the air. And, you know, I'm also at the stage of my life, my kids are both out of the house. So a two seater is perfect. So Carl, we just established you live in Michigan, which I believe has more clouds per capita during the winter than any other state in the United States. Do you or the have, globe, actually. Or the globe, yeah. I think yeah, it's worse think than the that's... haze of, of uh, pollutants over some other countries. Mm, maybe. But anyway, it's gray here a lot, especially in the winter. So 
do you have an idea, a reasonable expectation of what you think miles per day you'll be able to charge your Aptera when you get it here in Michigan? Yeah, obviously it's tough to estimate that, but you know, if you if you assume that we get maybe half the days we would get some some sunlight. And I think Aptera is estimating peak, you're gonna get what, 40 miles in when you live in a sunny climate. So let's say you're gonna get half that. Let's say you're gonna get 20 miles in, in the winter time on a on a sunny day. And then one thing that a lot of people don't know though is that solar still works even when it's cloudy. So maybe on a cloudy day, uh, I, I'm only gonna get five miles, you know? So that's just by having it sit out in the sun. Carl, thank you for spending time with us. We wanna catch up with you again, if you don't mind, after you're done with the award show, cause you're gonna be doing something at the Grand Rapids Auto Show, which we're gonna be covering. So we'll be there for that. And uh, we're awesome. gonna talk again, live this time. We have to actually yeah. see each other face to face. Yeah. yeah, and we can do, um, so we'll have our F-150 Lightning. And uh, so the company car, and what I like to do is, is you know what V to L is, right? Yep. Vehicle to mm -hmm. load. Yeah. Vehicle to we load. do something, we call it V to C, vehicle to coffee. Oh. So oh. we bring a little Nespresso machine, we plug it into the car and we make coffee for people. <laughs> that is awesome. We got you covered. Good. I'm excited. <laughs> All right, this is Carl Bloss. Check out his video here somewhere and his channel. And you should subscribe to his channel like we did yes. many months ago because yes. it's very informative. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Carl. Thanks for spending Thank some time with us. We love it. Say hi, awesome. to Larry. Say hi to Larry for us. Will do. And we should do definitely do an EVs and espresso sometime. Anytime. Coming Thank soon. You. Yep. Good.